All right, folks, we know you can feel it getting stronger by the day as we count down toward college football season, especially in Lincoln. Welcome into the Voice of College Football, Nebraska Huskers Live. We do it every Tuesday with Greg Peterson, Husker Online. Join his work right here on YouTube, Husker Online, or, of course, uh, the On3 site, HuskerOnline.com. Let's talk Nebraska football for the next 60. Leave those comments and questions there in the chat. Greg, what's going on today? Hey, you know, it was a busy, busy day. Down, uh, went down to practice. Uh, they let us in about 8.45 this morning and, uh, you know, got to see about a half hour of practice. And um, it was really hot. Uh, I apologize for my uh, Mike Riley uh, appearance here because I uh, just got out of the shower after taking a little dip in the pool. Um, but, uh yeah, you know, uh, got to see quite a bit this morning, a little more than we uh, figured on. And uh, then we heard from Matt Rule after practice, as, as well as uh, Donovan Rayola and a few players. So, um, you know, Huskers uh, completed uh, eighth day of uh, fall camp now today. So um, looking good. Is that your Mike Riley look or your Pat Riley look? Pat Riley, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mike Riley doesn't. I got more hair than Mike Riley. I'm sorry, sorry, Coach. But uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's my Pat Riley homage. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could do worse. I, I, you know, if this is better, we can just do that. How about hey? That? You do whatever you want. <laughs> you do whatever just, you want. I, you know, after after sweating out there yeah. this morning, uh, and then going up for the interviews and, and you know spending like an hour waiting I, I i couldn't stop sweating and all i could think about was getting in the pool so as soon as i got done with all my work that's what i did uh it was only for a little bit but you know because i knew we had to go on air so uh jumped back in the shower and got ready to go it definitely served pat riley well for all those years so yeah yeah well that's what yeah. my boss sean every time he sees me after I've taken the shower, uh, you know, if I, you know, get out of, in the hotel room, get out of the hotel room and meet him in the lobby or something. And he's always, he makes fun of me calling me Pat Riley. So, but that's how I dry my hair. Sorry. <laughs> there it is. All right, folks, you've got uh, Greg's hair drying tips. Yeah, yeah. So take them with you. And you put a hat on to shape it correctly too. So, yeah. So there you go. So well, let's talk about this football. Well, yeah, what happened at uh, practice today? Ah, well, nothing really today. Uh, you know, there was a few injuries to update. Um, uh, let's see. We can start with uh, Teddy Perhaska again has uh, taken a setback, but it, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, so we'll start with the offensive line. Nuri New Ellen also not uh, cleared for – a contact or anything, but he was in full pads and, and, uh, you know, doing some drills and stuff. Um, wide receivers, uh, uh, Xavier Betts and Malachi Coleman did not practice today. Undisclosed injuries, nothing serious. Um, where we already knew the serious, the two serious ones, we already knew about the first one was Brody Tagaloa on the defensive line. And then they suffered another one. Uh, freshman, true freshman, Maverick Noonan um, is out for the season as well with, with Brody Tagaloa. He uh, had a leg injury that, that's not, not an ACL or anything, but uh, he's having surgery, I think, next week, uh, like a six month thing. So he'll miss the entire season too. That's, that's a shame for, you know, a homegrown, a legacy player and a highly touted uh, freshman coming out of last year's class. But um, and he was looking really good. But, you know, those are the those are the main ones. Um, you know, and you still have a few bumps and bruises. Marcus Washington, we knew was out for a while. Um, he'd come back. He had a birthday. And then he, then he had an awkward fall, apparently, yesterday um in practice <laughs> he's he's out again for just a short amount of time <coughs> excuse me um, so <coughs> i'm trying still trying to get over 
<laughs> That's right. You were you my were, illness there. Um, yeah, you were yeah. taking one for the team last Tuesday. Yeah, so you're I still was working sorry. through that. Yeah, sorry, I still have a little bit of this cough left over. But uh, so the wide receiver room really is, uh, uh, you know, a little bit uh, shaven down right now for for uh, healthy bodies. But um, that's pretty much the brunt of uh, the injury situation. And, um, you know, besides the two defensive linemen I, I, I named, everybody else is uh, – it's like a day-to-day situation. And what you, what you you know, you expect in fall camp. You know, eight days through fall camp, you're going to get your, your bumps and bruises. So. so, Greg, based on what you've observed and also based on what Matt Rule has said – and maybe even more so what the veteran players have said that have been around for both regimes. What seems to be different about the way they approach practice? Uh, reps. I mean, reps, reps, reps. That's, that's the thing. Um, you know, cause they're, they've been doing, uh, most of the time they're doing the split practices and, um, and, you know, everybody's just getting a ton of reps. Um, and there, there's no standing around. Um, everybody's involved. Everybody is, uh, fired up. There's no screwing around. Like, like you see under other coaching staffs where, you know, guys are just messing around when they're not out there. I mean, you know, so being, being involved, taking all those reps, you're, you're always in line, you know, and that's what we, you know, when, when we're out at, at camps for high school prospects, um, and, you know, when you've been doing this as long as I have, I mean, you even go out, you go up, you're, myself, I'll go up and I'll tell guys, what are you doing standing around in the back here? I mean, you need to take as many reps as you can. You know, if you want to get a scholarship offer to get noticed, get your butt up there in the front of the line. Don't just screw around in the back and just talk to your buddies. Uh, so there's none of that going on here, you know, here anymore you know, at, at the next level that you're already, you're already in. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's such an efficient practice. Um, like I said, everybody is involved and um, it, it's just, uh, it's nonstop. And, you know, the, the guys, it, it, it's such benefit. It, it's a beneficial tool for everybody involved. You know, if you're a frontline player, you're a number two guy, you're a number three guy, or you're an incoming freshman, you're, you're getting as many reps as everybody else. So that makes you so much more valuable and so much more ready to play that, you know, in, in a certain situation during a game, you know, in a Big Ten game, um, your number might get called and, you know, you're ready to go. So that's that's the biggest thing that I notice. Our guy Fangways in the chat with a pretty general question, but just uh, he wants to know if the linemen look agile, faster, if the linebackers are flying to the football. Both of those, yes. Um, the linemen, uh, you know, I, I think I, I mentioned last week that they look so much leaner and they're moving so much better. And, um, you know, it really is. It it, it jumps out. It, it's that noticeable that, that they jump out that you don't see anybody really carrying any bad weight. And, um, you know, they're all busting their butts out there. And, you know, because it, it's an open competition across the board. And, uh, yeah, it, it's just uh, it, it's really it's, it's refreshing to see after kind of some of the uh, – lackadaisical uh, approaches we've seen from previous uh, coaching regimes here in Nebraska. And uh, yeah, the linebackers, um, I mean, those guys are hungry. Uh, that, you know, and, and you know, led by Nick Henrich, who it's, it's really nice to see healthy again. And, and him and Luke Reimer um, just have the whole group salivating to, just to go out and, and just hit guys and, I mean, that's the whole – the premise of this whole defense is fly around and and, and run to the ball, and uh, that's what you see out there. You know, these guys, they pin their ears back, and, and they're just ready to go. Um, I really like seeing, you know, this whole defense under, under the defensive coordinator, Tony White. It's taken a whole new uh, look to it than what we've been used to seeing. 
has Matt Rule talked at all about just how he approaches practice because different coaches oh, yeah. you know, position themselves in different ways. Maybe they just hang out with the quarterbacks a lot. Others are moving all over the place. Uh, of course, he's trying to get used to this team. They had spring practice, but you know he's trying to yeah. get used to the personnel, much of which he did not recruit and sign. So, No, he, he, he is hands-on. He is all over the place. Um, you see him, I mean, you know, he's not a coach that just stands around and chats with his, his assistants. Um, you know, he'll, he'll, he's watching everything and he's always calling guys over and, and giving him pointers and, and, you know, going through the motions with them and, and telling them what he wants them to do. And, um, it's really, it, it, it's a lot of fun to watch his interactions with his players because, <clears throat> in such a short time, <clears throat> excuse me, in such a short time, um, his whole team is bought in to, to what he's doing. And uh, he really, I mean, he demands, I mean, he doesn't demand it, but everybody just gives him the utmost ult, respect. And uh, you just can't help not to because just the way that his demeanor is and the way he comes off and, and his knowledge and and how confident he is in what he wants to do. And it trickles down to his whole coaching staff. Um, they believe in him a hundred percent. And, you know, the nice thing is with, you know, when you talk about his coaching staff is that he's got, he's got his coaching staff too deep, really. I mean, you know, he knows that with success, his guys are going to get, better job offers in the future and move on. He's already got a guy right there behind him with the same kind of experience and, and, and you know, coaching tenure, um, just another, you know, guy to, to add in there when you lose somebody, just, just, you know, like, like Bob Wagger, you know, being to just, well, um, you know, resigning, but uh, you bring in a guy that's already been in the tight ends coach um, for two power five teams already. So, that's just the kind of way. I mean, Matt Rule is a. To me, he's almost like the ultimate uh, general out there. That you know, he he, not just his players, but his coaches. He has backups for everybody, and uh, that's just his style. And and he's gonna, he's gonna play everybody that is, that in his mind, every player in his mind that is good enough to play is gonna play. Publix Eye Outdoors, appreciate your contribution there. Thank you so much for that. Says he loved the first video on fall camp that uh, they put out on Husker Online. So thank you so much for that, oh, everybody. Yeah, the one that came out last night he's talking about. Everybody get on over there. Check out all the work Greg's put in. Oh, that's on the Huskers. That's Huskers.com, I think he's talking about. Could be. Um, the documentary, they're doing like three of them, I think um that uh debuted last night where they have an inside look uh in the dorms and uh with everything going on there that's really worth a watch <clears throat> for everybody out there that we don't have anything to do with um so get over to huskers.com um and check that out uh it's a really really well done piece and the actual guy that that's uh the producing it is actually a student at, at UNL right now um, which Matt Rule just told us about today. So that kind of opened my eyes up. I was like, yeah, maybe I should have gone back to school. But, uh... <laughs> oh, well. Nice. <laughs> Thumbs up, everyone. Appreciate you being here. Uh, if you enjoy the content, the conversation we have each and every week on Nebraska football, please hit the like button. Uh, keep in mind, we post videos as well here at the Voice of College Football. So check out the Nebraska videos that we post, many of which are just a cut up version of what we uh, discuss here with Greg. But also we do some other uh, videos and uh, that you will see here at uh, the Voice of College Football. So check it out. I think that uh, the last time we talked that neither Washington nor Oregon was a part of the Big Ten. <laughs> So who but knows by this time now. next week who will be. Yeah, really. But that's two more prominent schools. Uh, you know, if you really look at the list of 
of big time schools and brands in the conference and it's getting to be eight, nine, ten deep now. Uh, like, you know, probably next week when we talk, North Carolina and Florida State will be uh, members of Big Ten. So <laughs> that's just kind of the way things are going. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, look at uh, – I mean, it, it's crazy. Obviously, I, well, in my point of view, I, I didn't want Oregon or Washington, but I, I don't have anything to do about it. I don't have any say in it. Um, so now you've got 18 teams, uh, but you look at that footprint that the big 10 now has, I mean, you add the Pacific Northwest. So the only thing that you don't have a big 10 footprint in is Texas or, or, or Florida. Um, so in my mind, it's made a civil war. I mean, just look at it. Um, North versus South now, uh, SEC versus big 10. And, uh, you know, the SEC says that they're standing pat right now. I want to see, you know, how, how it goes. But obviously they have to add more teams now too. Um, but, you know, to me, you know, you know, Nebraska got into the Big Ten. I mean, what are we talking about? 2011. Um, and, you know, you had a nice piece of the pie. But now you have to start sharing all this revenue with a bunch of new teams. Um so, I, you know, obviously they're going to get more TV money out of this as it is. But, you know, I mean, the Big Ten just flexing their muscle. And, I mean, it's crazy. You look at the Pac-12 that lost six teams last week. And, uh, you know, they're down to, you know, four now. And, uh, you know, somebody's got to want Stanford. I mean, seriously, or, or Stanford may have to go independent. I think in my mind that, that might be their best choice. But, you know, you leave Stanford and, and you know, another digit uh, academic school of Cal out of things. And, you know, I don't think those two schools want to have anything to do with the Big 12. Um, but it, it's just college football has changed forever now. And we're never going to see what we used to see. And, you know, I don't know if it's for the better or for the worse after all of this. Do you, whether it's you personally or Nebraska fans, based on the ones that you hear from, or Nebraska media, have any interest in seeing Nebraska play Washington and Oregon? Well, we've played them before. I mean, sure. and there's nothing wrong about playing them. Um, I'll say this, you know, if you have to go play at, at Washington – Boom, you fly to Seattle, you're there. Um, if you want to play Oregon, you got to fly to Portland and then drive three hours. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it, it, there's, it is what it is. I, I don't mind <clears throat> adding new destinations. It, it is all fine with me. I mean, places I've been to before, but I do enjoy going out there and um, – the more the merrier. I mean, it's all about making money, TV revenue, and that's the day and age that we're in right now. And you know, we're just gonna have to wait until it's all all said and done, and everybody's loaded up. You know, at least the 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 big Big Ten and the SEC are loaded up with twenty teams apiece, and um, we'll just kind of go from there. We have posted videos on the main channel, the national channel, that uh, go through the various uh, histories of all these schools that are switching conferences. And so actually, I just had to dust this one off because I projected Oregon to the Big Ten, not that a zillion other people didn't as well, uh, but Oregon to the Big Ten, Washington to the Big Ten months ago. And so I just have to kind of update those videos because basically I went back in time and as Greg alludes to, of course, Nebraska had a series uh, home and home with Oregon about 10 years ago, and they played Washington home and home. And what was interesting about this, about 20 years ago, 2002, 2003, they played Washington two consecutive years and sandwiched in between. They played a bowl game. So they played them three times in two years and uh, just went through uh, Washington's history against the Big Ten, Oregon's history against the Big Ten, recent history. It didn't go back to 1938. Uh, but the last 20 years and then kind of projecting forward how I see those programs and how they would do in the Big Ten. So check out those videos over on the national channel. Yeah, you know, and 
it, it, it's really it's unique to see what the Big Ten is doing and adding these iconic programs that um, obviously nobody wants to stay in the Pac-12 anymore. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're taking, you know, after USC and UCLA had already announced, and then Colorado was like, yeah, we're out of here. And so, you know, everybody else scrambles around. Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, all heading to the Big 12. And, um, you know, so why not have the Big 10 add those two iconic programs? And they are iconic programs in, in the college football landscape. And, you know, it just flexes their muscle because obviously we all know that, you know, they're fighting against the SEC to be the big dog. And uh, right now, obviously, I think the Big Ten has really made a statement. And, um, you know, we'll see how the SEC counters it. And you see all across, you know, the ACC, people want out of there now. And um, it's just it, – it's crazy what we're looking at. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised next week, like I said earlier, if North Carolina and Florida State are all of a sudden members of the Big Ten. Um, just the way things are going. But, I, I, you know, in my mind, I think Florida State doesn't want to be in the Big Ten. They want to be in the SEC. But uh, we'll see. But the Big Ten is after that Charlotte market is, is what my point is. Yeah, it is definitely a growing market. Yeah, absolutely. Charlotte's exploding. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, for as much as the Big Ten has gobbled up ground and TV sets with all these moves – a move to the Southeast would not be yeah. bad, would not and, be a bad thing. And, and you know, I mean, the, the SEC is locked in with ESPN and, and they're, they're out of money too. So it, it's kind of hard to see them uh, making any moves uh, this season right now. At, at the time that the television deal by the big 10 was cut with, of course, the existing one with Fox is continuing, but with NBC and CBS, Greg and I had the conversation and, and uh, we did on other shows and so forth about the genius of the NFL type model that the Big Ten is uh, has taken on with the uh, the layers of networks showing games throughout the day. And then they're all going to be previewing the other games. So NBC is going to be showing a game or they're a bad example because they're going to be at the end. But Fox is going to be showing a game at noon, but also telling you go to CBS at three thirty and then go to yeah. NBC at seven thirty. And it's almost like an NFL. When you watch the NFL games, they have contracted the the NFL. Go to the Peacock Peacock at at 11. Yes, the the, the NFL forces, exactly, in the Big Ten Network. uh, Because back in the old days, these these networks would not mention each other. They would, (laughs) it was like, (laughs) it was like forbidden to mention another network. But basically the NFL at some point said, you have to mention, if you want to sign the contract with us, you're going to tell people where our other games are. So yeah. now it's, and so the Big Ten has basically done the same thing to say, you're go- we're going to be promoted on all these networks all day, whether our game's on right at that second or not. And we're leaving out the Big Ten network as well with that. Yes, exactly. And, yeah. uh, and, and to your point, Greg, uh, while the cable distribution is shrinking, and has roughly shrank from shrunk from let me use my proper uh, term there shrunk from like 112 million distribution to uh, well let me let me phrase that right and let me get this correct at one point ESPN went over 100 million homes out of 113 at the time so they had passed the 90% saturation point now they're down into the low 80s 70s somewhere in that range table boxes are going away yeah they're going away and homes are going away but people will still be able to watch the big 10 over the air right exactly and i mean you know like kind of mentioned that espn kind of blew what they had i mean you know offering as much as they offered to get the sec exclusively like they did um now you see the aftermath of that is where they're laying off a bunch of longtime tenured uh, employees that, that had huge audiences uh, because they're out of money. 
And, um, you know, the Big Ten really outplayed them. I mean, if you're playing chess, I mean, they did a checkmate on them there uh, a couple months ago um, when they, well, whenever they did their whole deal with, with NBC and CBS and, and the whole shebang. So um, somebody was thinking uh, ahead, um, and I don't think it was ESPN. Somebody asked me on social media a couple months ago if ESPN laid me off, and I said, no, I laid them off. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Nebraska post game uh, starting here with week one and the matchup against Minnesota on that Thursday night. And we are happy to be joined by our post game host. That is Justin Adams. You can join him on Cheesy Corn Sports. It's right here on YouTube. <laughs> But uh, Justin is going to join us and knock out the Nebraska post game after every Huskers contest. So it's good to see Justin. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good, guys. Thanks. And uh, how y'all doing? Enjoying the conversation so far. I do have some nuggets to throw in here. And if, and nice to meet you, Justin. Nice to meet you too, Greg. I uh, it's funny. Um, I was watching the lives two years ago. I remember just sitting there and I watching them. Um, and it's surreal to kind of be here two years later. I had no platform back then or anything like that. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's a pleasure being here. And, uh, yeah, it's really nice to meet you, Greg. I love your studio setup, too. Appreciate wow. that. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a work in progress, but we're getting it there. <laughs> so, well, I, I'd be proud to be on your on your postgame show anytime. Just awesome. Me... Hey, yeah, we'll be in contact. I, I'll have you on whenever you want to be on. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yep. Justin, let's not dress up the studio too much. Let's you, you make other people look bad, <laughs> meaning myself. Exactly. Right. I'm, I'm just going to set up my Samsung um, going forward until we <laughs> get some camera upgrades. <laughs> well, Justin, is there anything considering that we've had eight days of camp? Greg's been able to get out there what three three times twice. Uh, we've had two uh, video photo opportunities in the last eight days. Yeah. Just anything, Justin, that you're interested in in regards to what uh, maybe Greg's taken in here in the first uh, eight days? You know, I just 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 a couple thoughts on on fall camp so far and the injuries, if if I may. Um, so my my kind of take on everything is like with uh, with Maverick Noonan, right? Maverick Noonan was a freshman that actually performed pretty well in the spring game. So we're actually pretty excited about him. But had a great spring. He did. Yeah. And for, and for Maverick Noonan, the, the thing to me is that it, at least on the bright side that there's not we're not running the risk that he will burn his red shirt because I do believe that potential was there, um, especially with the issues we have with the pass rush and Noonan kind of showing his pass rush capabilities in the spring game and stuff like that. So um, I, just a kind of a little bit of, of something there to take out of that. But feel really was, bad for him. I was shocked when I heard. Coach Rule say that he was out for the year today, just yeah. to out there. Because I mean, I've known Maverick. Uh, I don't know, five years. I've been covering him, and uh, great, great kid. You know, obviously takes after his dad, and uh, just loves the the game of football so much, and just loves to get after the quarterback. And I think he was a guy that uh, would have actually, you know, been a guy that made the the one hundred and ten and had some opportunities there, uh, you know, in, in a few games to, uh, to actually show his stuff. But, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we're not going to see him this year and thank God it's not an ACL type of an injury as far as what we heard from coach rule today. Yeah. It didn't sound like he had a lot of concern with it being any no. kind of structural issue. And I think outside of that, um, first off, Everybody needs to listen to the speech that's on that video you referenced earlier, the Matt Rule speech about the 10 percenters. Um, that kind of explains this 10 percent thing that we saw on Twitter a while back. Um, but it's a very good speech for anybody. But you can tell just how he has those players disciplined and how bought in they are. And, oh, and yeah. with that, his his whole thing is the the thing that I took away the most out of that was the fact that he is telling these kids, I don't care what your stars were. I don't care what your rating were. I don't care if you're on scholarship. The players that play the hardest are going to be out here with me. And and in my opinion, I think that was the the issue with Frost a lot of the times is he went with his guys over the guys who were working the hardest. Exactly. Um, so I think that's going to be a huge, huge, 
uh, change this year. So that that one made me, you know, that one made me feel good about it. And then the the wide receiver depth, um, that's turning into a concern quickly. So it is, but you know, like 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 Coach Rule says, is that it, it gives a lot of other guys opportunities to get a bunch more reps, and um, you know. It, it, the way he talks is he's got faith in about anybody that he's brought in and he's willing to give anybody a chance. Yeah. He opened the, or when he was talking about the injuries, he's like, I'm here to talk about the guys we're playing with, you know, exactly. That's his attitude. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to harp on the injuries. We're going to go with what we got right now. No excuses. Next man up. So. Yep. For sure. Justin, what do you consider to be the, um, the key positions over the next few weeks to get prepared for Minnesota? Honestly, um, offensive line, um, you know, it, he, he talked about being comfortable, finding seven guys he's comfortable with. Um, I don't know if I should read in too much of the fact that he was saying feels comfortable with. Um, I don't know if that means there's a, there's a lot of opportunities at the position and he's going to kind of have to filter through guys, move guys around and see where they fit best. Um, I think that's going to be the biggest thing for me is just seeing how that offensive line plays out, you know, because um, Latovsky, you know, had bright future, but, you know, and then we have um, Gunnar Nelson. Um, it's just like we, we have a lot of these guys that that we feel like can develop and, and be good, but it's just like it seems like something keeps happening. Um, but I do expect expect Riola to make some some improvements on that. And like I said on the other video, we got to walk before we can run. So improvement is an improvement at the end of the day. So and I agree. I agree, I agree. Definitely because um, you know, right now, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, really with Teddy Prohaska and, and Nuri New Ellen, uh, you know, not hundred percent. Mm-hmm that you have opportunities for other guys. Um, you know, Gunnar Gatula, you know, I know coach talks highly about him, but he is still a freshman. I mean, I'm obviously a guy that I know very well for many years. Um, Henry Lutovsky, a guy that, you know, I, I, I went and watched when he was a high school senior and, you know, I, I, he just made me drool watching him and, I mean, he, he is definitely – he's capable that, you know, he does – I think he deserves a shot to uh, to be one of those type of starters. So, I really do – I see about six guys right now that they can count on for sure. And uh, maybe you're throwing in, you know, one of the other newcomers or – you know, it's kind of hard to say, but <clears throat> I really I, – I don't think – you know, I mean, you hear you you hear coach talk about about Gunner and about Sam Sledge a lot. I I really think that they're at least a year away from actually being that type of a guy. So you got to go more, you know, rely on um, the guys that you already have. But the nice mm-hmm. thing about it is that you're in year two under Donovan Rayola now, yep. and uh, I've really seen a different attitude and, and a buy-in from that group across the board, and. Um, you know, I, I know that things haven't looked good in the past, and, and most fans are always going to harp on that offensive line first and foremost. I say just give them a chance and see because they're going to be running a different type of offense. I mean, obviously, you know, their goal is to run the ball, hold on to the ball, protect the quarterback, yeah. and – um you know, we're going to see, you're not gonna, they're not going to be thrown into a bunch of situations like they were last year or the year before under two different offensive coordinators. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it looks. But I do, I have a lot of faith in them. And I know I get beat up a lot um, on this show about, uh, you know, my uh, loyalty to the offensive line and to Coach Rayola. But um, I'm a believer right now until they prove different. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm a I'm a believer in, in Rayola too. Um, but yeah, I, I was l- looking through names: Justin Evans, Jenkins, Gunnar Nelson, Sam Sledge, like you mentioned. Just, um, but just with the physicality and how much they're harping on physicality, I think that alone will make us see a drastic improvement in the trenches. So on both sides of the ball. So yeah, and being there and seeing it in person, 
they've never looked better. I mean, just physically and in shape that, that I can remember in my, I don't know, my 13 years back here since, you know, leaving Nashville. So it's something, it's something pretty, uh, it's exciting to, to have a little bit of faith in the offensive line, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Agreed. Yeah. We've got uh, Justin Adams here. Justin and I recorded the other day. Check out those videos right here at the Voice of College Football. And Justin is going to be hosting our post-game coverage right here at the Voice of College Football. And, of course, it all gets started August 31st against Minnesota. So directly after the game, hopefully celebrate with Justin. If you need to uh, drown a few tears, Justin will also be available. But uh, hoping for better things and for a celebration on Thursday night in Minneapolis. So join Justin right here with the Voice of College Football in Nebraska for post-game coverage. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I will try to make it as happy as I can. On the <laughs> I know they're inevitable. I've learned to kind of make the most out of it. Um, I just kind of get sad more than mad at this point. So it's really helped me out a lot. Just I'm conditioned to it at this point. So I got y'all. Am I, getting, am I reading a prediction in there about the outcome? Of the oh, <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, I got my prediction, but I don't like to say it because it doesn't sound the greatest. Okay. Uh-oh. Fair enough. Okay. Seven and five. Well, as we talked about the other day, Justin, you're in a good position, at least in regards to our post game, because if Nebraska continues to lose, you can just throw up your hands and say, hey, it's Mark this salt. has been going on for a long time. So, yeah. hey, I didn't bring it. But if uh, there's a dramatic turnaround this year, my, yep. you, can, you can take the, the credit. So that's my good luck koala right there so okay. that's i put that there for for that purpose so he just got there so he'll be there all season okay is there such a thing as a good luck koala i guess there there um, is now i just kind of made that his name he's good luck koala so very nice <laughs> justin thank you so much for stopping by appreciate sure. it and again everyone uh make it a habit once we kick off on thursday night august 31st to join justin after every nebraska Football game. Absolutely. Um, appreciate it. And uh, appreciate the time, Greg and Mark. And uh, I'm going to go listen to the rest of it with y'all. And I will see everybody at the Husker post games. So, all right. Thanks, Justin. Going. Yes, Sounds sir. Good. Have a Take good night. Care. Take care, Greg. All right. Yes. We good will have. Yeah, absolutely. Loves the Huskers. So, that's the first prerequisite, folks, for when we were looking for hosts here at the voice of college football do you love your football team and then of course you got to know something about what you're talking about and then show up for the shows that's that's kind of key as well so we, we pipes, hold those pipes don't hurt either well you know you're able to fight through that so <laughs> you're a gamer you are a gamer greg's been here for 133 shows folks okay. so you know, understand uh, the appreciation there that we have. And so all of you should have for Greg uh, making this show possible for 133 weeks. If I do some math, we're looking at two years and about good Lord. We're looking at close to two and a half years. Yes. Makes feel old. Makes <laughs> feel old, bro. <laughs> you can only blame me for two and a half years uh, uh, of, of whatever wrinkles or gray hairs that you're talking about. I don't see them. So. They only really come in the beard. Um, well, that's that's my deal too. Yeah, uh, yeah. that that if I, I grew out the beard, I look like Santa Claus. <laughs> so we're not going to do there that. Yet. Route. I may be forced to one of these days. Not going to do that anytime soon. Everyone's taking their shots at Nebraska's record this year. This seems to be a weekly, oh, yeah. weekly event. Well, we still have a couple more weeks to uh, give our uh, predictions. So That's right. So. <laughs> we will have to figure that out. I think I know where you're sitting on that one. Unless something... Yeah, I really haven't changed. So, yeah. Unless I'm proved otherwise, then, then maybe I would change it. But um, I'm standing pat. If they win six or seven games this year, that is a great start to the Matt Rule Absolutely. regime. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, it is. Get to postseason play. Get to a bowl game. Yes. I still can't believe it's been since 2016 for a bowl game. And I mean, 
but it, it's hard to swallow. Longest drought in the Power Five. Yeah. Unimaginable. Kind of embarrassing, but uh, hopefully we change it around now. And I think we have the guy at the helm to do that. I do as well. We were talking some Nebraska and talk kicking around the uh, Western Division on our Iowa show, and somebody was getting after Matt Rule in the chat, stating that he was two and sixteen. Now I did not verify this, but two and sixteen against ranked opponents. Uh, I glanced at his Baylor tenure, and it was hard for me to believe he was two and sixteen because they beat a lot of teams with eight and nine wins. Uh, when he was at Baylor. So that two, two and 16 wasn't necessarily flying with me. Uh, right. But let's also understand that when he yeah. arrived at Temple, they were horrible. Yeah. And even when you're good at Temple, if you're playing top 25 teams, you're going to be playing, you know, the Penn States of the world are going to be on your non conference schedule. Nobody's winning those games at Temple. Notre Dame, maybe. Yes, Something. exactly. Notre Dame, that's another good example. They played them as well. And then when you show up at Baylor and you've got a one win football team, you know, so got to take some of these numbers into context. Yeah. You turn around a one win team in the big 12, like he did. Um, that's saying something. Yeah. Not saying I'm not trying to diss anything, what he did at temple, but sure. uh, yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he made Baylor, uh, you know, a team to be reckoned with in the big 12 in a short amount of time. Yeah, they got hit with a uh, injury to their starting quarterback in the Big 12 championship game and still almost pulled it out in yeah. overtime, came within an overtime of winning the Big 12, still went to the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. So he's got nothing to be ashamed of, that's for sure. And obviously, I mean, you know, when you're playing, you know, if you're a starting quarterback in, in a Power 5 conference, um, it's pretty tough to make it through a whole season without getting banged up. And I mean, you know, Nebraska, how long has it been since Nebraska had a, a quarterback that uh, made it through an entire season? Um, so, <coughs> you know, you want to think that Jeff Sims is going to be able to hold up like that. But, you know, that's why, uh, you know, Chubba Purdy has been getting a lot of praise lately about, uh, you know, the way he's been uh, playing here in camp and, um, so you can't tell me that at certain times of the season that Trevor Purdy or Heinrich Harburg is not going to have to uh, run the offense here and there. Um, that's just the way college football kind of is these days. I do remember this game. It was brought up and I posted it from Dion. Dion, thank you very much. Uh, Matt Rule at Temple played Penn State twice and they won a game. I do remember this game. It was at uh, the, the Eagle Stadium, Lincoln Financial Field against uh, Christian Hackenberg and company at Penn State 2015. Yeah. Yes. Beat Penn State and then lost to Penn State the next year, but in a close game. Yeah. No. So his teams were always tough. I mean, I don't care who they're lining up against. They only lost to Notre Dame, and this was a prime time game. I remember this on ABC at Temple. Lost to a number nine Notre Dame team, twenty four twenty. Not bad. Not bad at Temple. I have to admit that I did not watch that game. <laughs> I remember that one. I don't remember much of what happened. I I do remember it was a competitive game, but. Uh, and lost the conference championship game to a top 20 Houston team. Yes. So, yeah. Temple's not been good since. No, they haven't. And rarely good before. You know, <laughs> well, Philadelphia is a hard place to uh, to sustain, uh, you know, a good product. Uh, Eagles have done a good job of that here lately, but... Um... I don't know if there's more pressure anywhere in the country to win outside of the city of Philadelphia, maybe Lincoln, Nebraska, but that would be about the top two that I can think of. Yeah, I hear you. A couple people in the chat clamoring about special teams. Anything of notes stands out there? Oh yeah. I mean, they've got, you know, we, we, we heard from uh, Ed Foley, the special teams coordinator, yesterday following practice. And, um, I mean, they're really high on 
pretty much everything they got. Um, and, you know, you got guys that are – you're so deep right now because, you know, you're doing kind of a mix of uh, actual starters at position groups with a bunch of uh, other guys that, that buy in and, you know, cause that's what you have. You have, you have special teams guys. That's their role. Um, we see it in the NFL. We see it in college football. I mean, they're out there representing the Huskers, even if they're not a starter at their own position group, but they, uh, you know, they wear that hat proudly of being a special teams guy. Uh, we heard from one today who's Phelan Sanford. You know, he's a safety, and um, he has some big moments at safety last year for Nebraska, and he's on all four of the special teams. teams. And um, But they're out there. They're just going balls to the walls out there every day, and it's a, it's a point of pride. And Coach Foley is one of the masters as, as a special teams coach, and – um, it's really fun because we got to see special teams period this morning. So it was kind of nice to see how that was operating. And um, it's, it's a battle. Every, every position is up for competition and uh, they're all proud about what they're doing out there. And um, you know, you have uh, obviously Brian Bruschini is the incumbent starter as the punter who's a very, accomplished punter and a very very intelligent man and, and he knows his stuff i mean it's a pleasure to listen to him speak because you know he he goes to all those national kicking camps and has won a ton of awards um he's going to be an nfl punter hands down 100 percent. and um but then you have you have a battle for the kicking spot um, Timmy Bleak Road, who, who was the kicker last year, is in a fierce, fierce battle with incoming freshman Tristan Alvano out of Omaha West Side, who has a golden leg and, um, in my mind, already hasn't even played a game of college football. But I think he's, a, he's pretty much a lock to, to be another Nebraska NFL kicker uh, when he's done here. Um, so that's a really cool battle to, uh, to keep your eye on. Um, and you know, each one of them has made them up their games, um, just going against each other and neither one of them is backing down from the competition. So that's kind of nice to see. So, I mean, Nebraska's Matt rules philosophy is, you know, you know, you, you, you hold on to the ball, you run the ball, you protect your quarterback, you get after the quarterback on the other side of the ball and you win with special teams. So uh, if that uh, combination clicks, Nebraska is going to be winning more games than they're going to lose this year. There it is, folks. Uh, we'll give it one more look in the chat to see if there's anything there. Appreciate you all stopping by here at the Voice of College Football, Husker D, GBR indeed. And, uh, yes, yeah, special teams, a bit of a forgotten uh, point of detail. Yeah. from the previous regime, and uh, it's an important part of the game. What what comes to mind, there could be about 50 things that come to mind, but that game against Michigan State, a team that was top 10 in the country, and you know, blowing a punt coverage and being faked out, juked out by the... Uh, what happened in that game? There was... There was yeah, they, they were about to win that game, and then they, they gave up a punt return touchdown that forced overtime. That's what it was. Yeah, there's just way too many mistakes. Um, you know, the nice thing is that, you know, Matt Rule obviously believes in having a special teams coordinator. Uh, you know, we haven't seen that for a while until, you know, last, you know, Scott Frost was basically forced to uh, – to hire a special teams coach, which, you know, in my mind, Bill Bush is really, really good at doing that. But uh, it was a little too, a little too late um, under the Scott Frost regime. Um, but Ed Foley is, he knows this stuff. He's been coaching for 35 years. And, um, you know, he is a lot of fun to watch out there while he's, uh, you know, working with his guys and stuff. So, um, you know, he's a no nonsense guy. I mean, he is a, he's a very funny, he's a Philly guy. So, you know, that he's, uh, 
he's pretty rough around the edges. And um, I mean, one of the fun things that we've seen here with uh, Nebraska living in the dorms here, um, you know, they're on their second week, their final week in the dorms, but uh, there's been a lot of pranking going on on the coaches. Um, but the one coach that has not been pranked is Ed Foley. Um, he won't allow it. So it's kind of funny. And uh, his son's involved with some of that too, because his son's uh, an assistant. And, you know, he, he flat out told his son that if anybody messes with him, they're in trouble because um, he says when he gets to the dorms, he wants to be asleep in six minutes uh, after he gets to his room. So Six minutes. Yeah. He's got yeah. it down to a T. Yeah. Yeah. So very regimented guy. I uh, guess. And, and uh, I really, I like being around him. He, he's a, uh, he's a pleasure to uh, be around. CB, yes. Flea Flicker, thank you so much against Michigan State. When I was putting that together, I was thinking, oh, yeah. I was hesitating. I was yeah, like, there was like, something else. No. It just wasn't a punt return. There was something about it, and that's why I couldn't quite spit that out. But I knew that there was something else added to that punt return. And there was also an issue with, yeah, everybody getting duped on another punt return during a game that was critical where they threw some kind of you know, one of those deals where everybody ran to one side of the field, but the punt was over here. Uh, one of those deals. Yeah. And then of course the infamous uh, onside kick with a two score lead against uh, Northwestern. Just too many undisciplined things going on on special teams here in the recent past, but uh, there really aren't any excuses for, it. and I don't think you'll, you're not going to see that here out of this, uh, this team. All right, folks, appreciate you being here. Huskers live right here at the Voice of College Football. It's every Tuesday we get together. How about that? Every Tuesday, folks. So bring it on back next Tuesday, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Greg, complete the um, the run to health here. Get the rest of that out of you. Get some I'm rest, almost there. Fluids. Yeah. Okay. No, last two days I felt so much better. I'll, I'll get a little coughing spell here and there, but okay. uh, it's been so much better, and I've actually been able to start um, getting back into my normal routine after like two weeks of just being miserable. So um, feels good, it really does. And you know, we have my wife to blame for all this too. So if anybody wants to uh, hit her up uh, and tell her how upset you are with her. Be my guest. <laughs> it's always the closest ones to us that, uh, yeah. Well, you know what? You take that risk when you, you're married to a doctor who's around sick people every day. And I uh, can't tell you how many times she's come home sick and you try to avoid her like the plague. So, uh, yeah, um, it happens. And unfortunately, I got tagged this time without even trying. So, oh, well. But no, I mean, it's looking good. And hey, we got, you know, media has next two days off. Um, so we won't be back. Uh, Friday and Saturday will be our next two uh, uh, post practice opportunities. And um, interesting enough, uh, you know, Nebraska has been practicing in the morning all these times. But now, uh, tomorrow on Wednesday, they will practice in the afternoon. And then um, Thursday, or no, tomorrow they will practice tomorrow night. And then Thursday they will have an afternoon practice. Um, so Coach Rule kind of explained his thoughts about this, um, that it's all about recovery time, especially when, you know, when we lead off a uh, post-practice uh, press conference with injury news, it makes a lot of sense that, um, you know, he, he wants them to have this recovery time tomorrow and then have their practice tomorrow night under the lights also that he wants them to get some practice, you know, catching the ball under the lights, um, stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, they'll still have, they'll have some nice recovery time for Thursday's practice. So, um, then they'll be back at it in the mornings on Friday and Saturday, and then they'll have another off day. They had an off day last Sunday. They'll have another off day this Sunday and yay. They all get to move back home. So um, they're all going to be very, very happy um, to get out of the dorms, even though it's been a pretty cool experience for all of them. Um, but they were, they were really happy uh, this past Sunday where 
Um, Coach Rule gave them all their car keys back and everything and, and allowed them to actually leave campus on Sunday, just, you know, as long as they were back uh, for meetings and for, uh, um, for curfew. So they all did get a little time to spend outside of the uh, campus uh, on Sunday, in which they all enjoyed uh, as much as they could. Folks, we can benefit your business uh, sponsoring here at the Voice of College Football. So hit me up at Mark Rogers TV at Gmail to find out more. See you next Tuesday, everyone. 7 Eastern, 6 Central Huskers Live. Bring some friends with you, and we'll see you then. See you, everybody.